Okay. So I think it's already recording already. Okay. So okay. today we're going to be starting with parasitology. So this might be somehow, but I want you all to know that parasitology is actually very important um, thing you have to know. There's some major parasites you actually have to know, and it keeps coming out every year in um, MDCN exam. So that's the reason I'm saying we're going to be doing some IE parasitology class. I actually wish everybody is here, so if anyone has questions, so they can ask, or if there's anything they don't understand, we could all go over it together. But since not everybody is not here, we just start a few things on what you know. So the first group of the parasite, we're gonna okay. So there are so many groups of parasites, but the first groups we are going to just talk about the major one. We're not going to talk about everything under the groups, but the major one. The first one we are going to talk about are the trematodes. And we are going to talk about the major thing you need to know about the trematodes. The major thing you need to know about the trematodes. So when you talk about the trematodes, they are also called the, uh, the flukes. They are flukes. They are called the flukes. So they are, most of them look like, they look like a shape of a leaf. We all know leaf now. They look like leaf. Yeah. So they are also called the, also known as, also known as the flukes. Okay, don't let us forget that. And I said they look like the shape of a leaf. The, the, look i mean they have let's say leaf shaped let's put it like that okay they are leaf shaped worms don't forget they are all worms most of all these two and one of their features is they are flat and even despite they are flat they are flat and fleshy also so this is one of the features of the trematodes or the flukes. So you should know this. Another name for the tremats are the flukes. And I told you they are leaf shaped, they are flat and they are fleshy. And one of the features you have to know about all these groups of trematodes is their diagnosis is mostly by the eggs. That is one thing you should know generally. For you to diagnose any flukes, eggs are used to diagnose their infection. If somebody is infected by any of the flukes, most of their diagnosis is maybe you check for the stool in the egg. You understand? So diagnosis is always like let's say eggs. Eggs are used to diagnose infection. Let's take note of that. I'm just giving you this scheme. So when you are asked the diagnosis, you know for all flukes, for all trematodes. Mostly their diagnosis is using the eggs. You understand? So yeah. there, are, there are so many groups of flukes, but we are going to talk about the major one that you actually need for this exam, this MDCN exam, because the aim of this our tutorial is to be MDCN focused. You understand? And the first set of flukes we are going to talk about are actually the chistosomas. Are you getting me? They are the most high yield yeah. and definitely MDCM will always ask you questions on Chistosoma. Okay? So Chisto, Chistosoma. So this is the first major one. And trust me, believe me, in Nigeria generally, they love this question. Okay? They love this question. They are highly used. So there are three types of actually Chistosoma. Okay? We have the Chistosoma, the intestinal Chistosomiasis. Don't forget, we have two type, three, three major types actually. We have Mansone, Japonicum, and uh, Hematobium. So I classify Mansone and Japonicum. They are also referred to as the intestinal uh, and Chistosomiasis. So don't forget, Chistosomiasis is called some other names. So you might see it probably in a clinical vineyard or somewhere. They are also known as some other names. So other names for Chistosomiasis or Chistosoma, other names. It's very important for you to know these other names. Other names include, let's say, uh, snail fever. It's also known as the snail fever. It's also known as the uh, 
Biazia. Biazia. Don't forget, they call it Biaziasis. You are correct. Dr. Aisha is also called Biaziasis. Biaziasis. I'm coming Biaziasis. Yeah. It's also known as Biaziasis. Or also known as what? Also known as Katayama fever. Don't forget. Katayama fever. So these are some of the names they call it. Okay? Please don't let us forget. They call it biasiasis or they can call it katayama fever. Biasiasis with R. Yeah. Or known as the katayama fever. So you can hear them calling these names. And trust me, Nigerian, they like to kind of confuse you by changing the names. So the main names is snail fever, biasiasis, or katayama fever. Katayama fever. Please let's take note of those names. They are very important for us to know the names. Okay. So having you known the name, um, how do people mostly get this? How do people mostly get um, the trichotillomyiasis? Even before talking about how people get the trichotillomyiasis, let me explain the classification for you. There are actually two types. There are actually three types, apparently, but I subdivide it into two types. The first one, we have the intestinal, intestinal schistosomiasis. Schistosomiasis. Please let's take note of that. We have the intestinal schistosomiasis. And this intestinal schistosomiasis includes two major types of schistosomiasis. They are subdivided into the first one is we have the um this we have the we have the schistosomiasis. Mansoni, Mansoni, okay, and we also have another type, which is also known as the, I know this is not the first time we are hearing this doctor, what's the second type, the intestinal tistosomiasis, what do we call it? We are just two, Japonica. so, Japonicum, Japonicum, it should be more interactive, we have the tistosomiasis Japonicum, so these are the two major types of uh, intestinal tistosomiasis we have. Are we getting it? So we also yes. have other types which are not um, intestinal because of the place they are affected. We call it the urogenital um, schistosomiasis. The one that affects the urogenital system. The urogenital. So this is also known as the schistosomiasis hematobium. Am I making sense? It's called yes. schistosomiasis Hematobium. Please let's take note of this. So these are the actually the classifications of schistosomiasis that we have. Am I making sense? These are the two major categories. Yeah. Yes. Don't forget the mansonai, the japonicum, and the hematobium. So it's very important for us to differentiate all these schistosomiasis. And first, how do we get schistosomiasis? Any idea how we get schistosomiasis? Dr. Aisha. Injection of cyst. Injection of what? Of the eggs. Okay, how do we inject the egg? How did the egg get inside us? Oh. And Dr. Aisha. Is from, uh, from our leg. Yeah. From where? Usually. Okay, from through the skin, yes. Actually, it's mostly through the, contact mostly with on the legs. water. And it went, it, it penetrated inside the skin. Don't forget, through contact, maybe you, you, people that works in, you know where they plant rice now, you know rice are mostly grown in swampy area, and people that works and they have that snail, there's a particular snail that is one of the major distinct of it, so once you put your leg, you have high chances of getting it, or infected water, you understand, so it penetrates through an intact skin, so let me say, um, mode of Maybe acquisition. Let's say mode of uh, acquisition. Let's say mode of acquisition. So how do we acquire it? Is through contact with. Um, let's say contact with water or infected water. Let's say infected water. Infected. Water. 
So any water that, that, that is infected and has the organism in it, any contact with it, like if you have contact with those kind of water, it will penetrate through the skin. Penetrate through intact skin. So this is how you actually get or you acquire uh, chistosomiasis. Am I making sense, doctors? Please let's take note yes. of that. Yeah. So acquisition is through contact with infected water. So you have to be able to identify each of the chistosomiasis. It's very important. Because in your picture test, you might be display pictures of chistosomiasis hematobium, pictures of chistosomiasis mansonai, and, just, and pictures of chistosomiasis um, japonicum. So you should be able to differentiate each one. Do you understand? And don't forget, this is just the way to acquire yes. it. There are also organisms that are reservoir for this chistosomiasis. They are reservoir organisms for chistosomiasis. Do you understand? And one of the reservoir organisms yes. can include cats, dogs. Thank you, doctor. Cattles. Those are some of the reservoir organisms. Please let's take note of it. If you are writing, you can write that down. You will still get this video after the whole class. I will share with you some of us so we can have the video. So it's true contact with infected animal. So one thing I want to share with you is the picture of chistosomiasis. We have to be able to identify the pictures of chistosomiasis when we see it, and we have to actually know how the chistosomiasis progresses. How, what does it happen? What are the complications? What does it cause? Do you understand? So you have to know that the progression in human, when it enters through the skin, normally causes itching. Don't forget, where it penetrates, it normally causes itching, like serious itching. And it goes to the mesentria, in the, in, it goes through the veins of the mesentria, and there it begins to grow and grow and grow. Then the egg causes granulomas in the liver. Do you understand? It causes granuloma in the liver. And that is why most times the hematobium can be very dangerous. Also the urogenitor. But the urogenitor form, which is the, sorry, the intestinal form, which is the Japanese comma, the masonic, can be very funny because they go to the mesentrium and they lay their eggs in the vein resulting to granomas. But this urogenital form actually always goes to the bladder. So it's always associated with some carcinomas of the bladder. Chronic form can be associated with some carcinomas of the bladder. Please, are you, do you understand what I'm saying and what I'm talking about? Yeah. All right, very good. So let's continue with the necessary thing we need to know because let me show you the pictures first and how to differentiate both of them. I'm just going to show you the. Can you see my screen? Can you see what I just posted? No. You can see it. Okay. Um, no, the, the normal screen is first here. Yeah. All right. Okay. Let me do that. Let me try and um, new share. I want to show you something. Can you see this? Yeah. So look at this picture very well. Dr. Isha, can you see this picture? Can Dr. Isha see this picture? She's not with us again. Is she with us? Wow. Dr. Isha, it's like she's not listening to us. All right. But she's so, still. Online. Yeah, she's online, but she's not listening to us. All right. Uh, Dr. Julius, you just listening. So once you see a okay. egg like this, okay, this is actually yeah. eggs of chistosoma. So how do you differentiate yeah. egg of chistosoma from the other eggs? Look at this egg very well. Do you see any? You see this yeah. uh, this spine here. Spike. This spike. Yeah. This spike here is actually yes. a very important thing to differentiate the chistosomas. Am I making sense? So when you see a yes. sub a sub spike here. It's called mansoni. It's chistosomiasis mansoni. So what do I mean for you to remember? Just remember sub. When you see something like sub spike, okay? Because mansoni have the capital letter S, that's a spike, but there is no terminal. Look at the spike is around this area. Can you see where the spike is? Compared to... Yeah. Yes. Oh, Dr. Aisha, you're back. I was calling you before. Oh. Sorry, someone called me. It's all right. 
Okay. So just remember mm -hmm. subterminal spike. When you see a subterminal spike, it's not at the terminal edge. Subterminal. It could be anywhere here. It could be anywhere here. So we are talking about Chistosomiasis mansoni. Am I making sense? Yes. Yeah. So when you see another spine, let me stop sharing. Let me just write two things. Oh, wait. I hope my screen is not, what I've been sharing since is not gone. I think it's gone, doctors. Oh, it's still there. Wow. Oh, it's still there. It's still there. I thought it's gone. So, how do you differentiate gistosomiasis, the intestinal form? Let's say the intestinal gistosomiasis. So, the intestinal gistosomiasis. I told you we have the mansone and the japonicum. The mansonine. Just remember mansonine. Yes. As what S mansonine. Just, just remember this S here. It means for you to differentiate the picture, it has a sub what? It has a subterminal spine or substaminal spike. So terminal spike or spine, whichever one you want to choose. And for the Japonicum, we have the chistosoma. Japonicum. But Chisosoma Japonicum doesn't have spike. No spike at all. I'm going to show you a picture of that. Let me show you a picture of Japonicum. Okay? Let me show you a picture, mm -hmm. of, a picture of Japonicum. Hold on a second. Yeah, this is a Japonicum. I'm trying to share the the image with you guys. Um, pause share, resume share. Hold on, doctors. I'm trying to share this. Okay. I want to share something else. Yeah. Can you can you see this picture? Can you see this image? Yeah. Yeah, this is how a mansion looks like. Can you see there is no spike there? Yeah. yeah no spike for mansion. I please they take note of that. All right. So let's continue. Like, it's like I can hear myself. Okay, so that is that about uh, Mansonai and uh, Japonicum. Let's continue. The next one we're going to talk about, apart from, wait, is it that somebody, there's something going on? All right. Hello? I believe you can hear me, doctor. Oh, it's like there's an echo. That is why I'm, I have to mute you. Okay, let's just, oh yeah. Okay, let's just continue. Let's continue. So, haven't you understand the subterminal spike and for the Japonicum that there is no terminal spike? The another one, the other part you should know is the uh, Chistosomiasis hematobium. The Chistosomiasis hematobium, the urogenital one, hematobium, this one has a terminal spike. So, at the edge or at the end of it, you see a spike. These pictures are actually very important to know this picture because of MDCN exam. They love something like this. You might be asked questions like these doctors. So I want you to actually take it very serious. I'm going to show you a picture of that now. Look at, can you all see this picture? Can you see the spike here? Can you all see the spike? This is terminal spike here. Yeah. It's different from the one that has a sub terminal spike. This one has a terminal spike here, yeah, it's at the edge. So that's how you differentiate Chisosomiasis hematobium, Chisosomiasis mansoni, and Chisosomiasis japonicum. You understand, doctors? So this is how you differentiate it. Another doctor just joined us. I don't know. 
So that is it about Kisosomiasis hematobium. Uh, welcome, Dr. Adebisi. Dr. Abedi, uh, Adebisi, you should have joined earlier now. Uh, yes, I'm sorry. I had some process. I, had I don't know, but it's it. not because I was waiting for everybody to the screenshot has stopped and window is closed. Okay. Hold on. It's all right. Well, let us know earlier. So, because it's summer, if we say, like, we are waiting actually for everybody. But it's all right. Let's just continue. So, doctor, that is that about histosomiasis hematobium. I believe we all understand what we're saying. So, we'll, we'll continue with um, the other this thing that is very important for us to know about histosomiasis. So, don't forget, how do you make diagnosis for all this? Diagnosis is mostly using their eggs. Using their eggs is a definitive diagnosis. In the feces, you are going to check for the eggs and you are going to see the eggs in the feces. But another interesting thing is you know the risk factor to all this. The risk factor is mostly, I told you before, if you swim in lake, if you swim in ponds, or people that walk where there is a, what's it called? People that, people that walk where they make rice and your leg is always in the water. So you are at risk. So let me just write risk factors. Risk factors to having liver fluke in general. So if you probably seen swimming in lake. Swimming in lakes, in ponds. And where, what else again? In ponds. Where else again, doctors? Maybe any, any water that is infected, okay? You can be infected with it. Or washing clothing. Yeah, washing clothing, infected water also. You can also, can also cause something like that. Do you understand, doctors? All right. So that is that about the um, O risk factors. So the clinical pictures is what is very important also. Because the clinical picture, the way the um, Chisosoma japonicum um, mansoni we present will be different from the way Chisosoma hematobium we present. Do you understand? Because I told you Chisosoma hematobium is the urogenital form. So their presentation will be slightly different from the way Chisosoma mans uh, intestinal form of Chisosomiasis mansoni and japonicum we present. But in general, the clinical pictures, you see, always see a low-grade fever, the patient will have weight loss, anemia, fatigue, in general, for every one of them. You understand? So generally speaking, let's say generally speaking, okay, uh, let's say, hold on. Okay, clinical features. So for the clinical features, generally, you the patient will be presented with maybe let's say low grade fever, low grade fever. Apart from low grade fever, the patient might have things like weight loss, weight loss, fatigue. You understand? These are the just general symptoms. But in the intestinal form, we have some intestinal symptoms. I told you because the pathogenesis of the Chisosoma hematobium, it goes to the mesentery vein. That is where it matures. And when it matures in the mesentery veins, it might cause some intestinal symptoms. Intestinal symptoms like what, doctor, I want to hear from us. What do you think it will come? It will cause intestinal pain, abdominal pain. It's very abdominal important. Abdominal pain. Yeah, apart from abdominal pain, what else, please? Distension. Distension, okay, it can cause abdominal distension. Don't forget. Apart from that, what can it cause? Don't forget it's in the vein. So it can cause gastrointestinal bleeding. You can say hemato, can, what's it called? Uh, hematemesis. You understand? You can see melena also. It can have symptoms of uh, intestinal bleeding. Do you understand? And even it can result into liver enlargement because it forms granuloma inside the liver. Don't forget. It causes granuloma inside the liver. So it can cause, uh, let's say, Clinical or for intestinal form. I can remove some of this thing here now. Intestinal, intestinal form. Intestinal form causes, let's say, abdominal pain. Abdominal, abdominal pain. Apart from abdominal pain, what other thing do I say? It can cause things like maybe blood in 
in the stool. So it can cause things like melena, gastrointestinal bleeding, melena, it can cause melena. It can even result into increasing the size of the liver. I said it, hepatomegaly. You understand, it can result into hepatomegaly. All these are for intestinal form. But the way urogenital form will present will be different. You understand, doctor? The way urogenital form will present will be different. Please, doctor, these are actually high yield topics and these are MDCN oriented topics. I want you guys to actually take note of it and I don't want you to just take it like we are just doing it. Please, doctors, I don't want you guys to just take it like that, that we are just doing it. I want you to actually take it serious because these are high yield topic. Hold on, trying to clear up. Okay. So let's continue, doctor. So for the, um, the urogenital form, how does it present? What do you think we present with urogenital form? We can use the chat box. Uh, doctor, um, Dr. G, Dr. G, I yeah. actually muted you because of the voice from your side. That was the reason I muted okay. you. Okay, uh, it's okay. like I'm hearing some echo from your side. So that's the reason I muted you. So you can only use the chat box, please. So somebody is saying something. This urea, okay? So don't forget, the, we have a doctor that just joined us, Dr. Amina. You're welcome, Dr. Amina. So for the gastrointestinal form, for the... Um, Urogenital form, what kind of symptoms will you see in hematobion? What kind of symptoms? So, Dr. MK said this urea is correct. You will see this urea. So, this urea, apart from this urea, what other thing? Oh, sorry. I'm supposed to write this urea here. I'm typing. Okay, this is for the urogenital form. So, Dr. Amina, what we are discussing about is the trematodes. We are talking about the trematodes, and I explained that the trematodes are also known as the what? What do I call the trematodes again? And doctors, are you with us? I call it trematode one names. I call them, they are known as the flukes. Okay, Dr. Aisha, I said they are known as the flukes. And they are leaf shaped. It looks like the shape of a leaf. Don't forget, I said that earlier. And I explained about how they are being um, transmitted. And most of their diagnosis is using the eggs. Okay, so we diagnose them using the eggs. And I talked about the major group that we are going to be talking about. That we are going to talk about majorly of, about the chistosoma, uh, chistosoma. So we are not going to talk about others. There are other there's um, the uh, clonicasis sinensis. Those ones we are not going to talk about it. They are not MBCN oriented. They are not IE. So the one that MBCN used to ask mostly on the trematodes, the, the flux, the chistosomiasis. And I said earlier that chistosomiasis is also known as the Katayama disease or known as the Biasia or the snail fever. I explained that before. And I explained how the risk factors to getting chistosomiasis. I said mostly is when you swim in infected water, in infected ponds, if you go to lakes and you swim in that place, so you can have chistosomiasis. And even people with STIs are also prone to having similar thing also. Do you understand? So transmission, I said it's transmitted through contact with intact skin. So it can penetrate through the skin and you can be infected. Especially people that work in ponds, in lakes. Do you understand? Those are the people that get it. And I said something about the reservoir. The reservoir include the cats, the dogs, the cattle. Those are the reservoir. And I said, what, what happens is once you are infected, it penetrates through the skin and it causes itching on that area that it penetrates through. Do you understand? And it can result into, uh, it, goes to your, it goes to your intestine, to the intestine vein, the mesenteric vein. Then in the mesenteric vein, it can even result into granulomas in your liver. Do you understand? So it can result into granulomas. So I, these are some of the things I explained earlier on that I told you, I showed them the pictures of Chisosoma hematobium, Chisosoma mansone, and Chisosoma japonicum. And I also said that Chisosoma hematobium is a urogenital form, mostly affecting the 
urinary tract. And the Chisosoma hematobium and Mansone are the um, gastrointestinal form. And most of it replicates.